Welcome back to 5 Minute Kerbal. Today we're going to be talking about stack decouplers and staging. This is a rocket we've been playing with. It's a command module with a parachute on top. Then we've got a 400 tank. Then we've got an 800 tank, some fins, and an engine. Okay. What if we wanted to shoot this up in the air and then hit the uh, parachute? The parachute's got a lot of weight that's going to be dragging it down, and when these things hit the ground, they're going to explode. So the solution is to chuck all that away, go up to the structural tab up here, and then find the TR-18A stack decoupler. It might be on a different page. And there we go. Now, you see this little green, uh, or excuse me, red arrow? That red arrow points towards the stuff that you want to eject. So when you hit space, essentially what's going to happen is, you see it's, it's actually a stage down here. It's these two little parallel lines with a dot in the middle. It's basically going to explode between the two stages and eject the one where the arrow is facing. So let's go ahead and build a small rocket. I'm going to grab one of those 400 fuel tanks again. And now let's grab a tiny engine. This is the LV-909 liquid fuel engine. Okay, so now this is a totally functional rocket right here. If we hit space bar, the first thing to fire will be the engine, and then the decoupler, and then the parachute. Let's make it even more multi-stage. Let's go up here to the control surfaces, or the control tab, and we will get a stack decoupler. Same one, the TR-18A. And now we have another stack decoupler in our stack here. Let's go back to propulsion. We'll get another 400 fuel tank. And this time, on the bottom, we will put a LV T45 liquid fuel engine. This is the 200 thrust one. Let's add some fins. Remember symmetry mode. We're going to put this in, ah, let's go three times symmetry mode. Add some fins for stability, and let's check our staging. So at the bottom, you can see it highlights the engine. It highlights it in green here. And actually, if you mouse over the engine, it highlights the stage. So it's very useful. You're going to be using that a lot. So first is this engine, then that stack decoupler, then that engine then the stack decoupler, and then finally the parachute looks good. Let's take it for a test drive. So we're going to burn off some fuel here, throttle up, hit T for stability assistance, and we go. Now while this fuel is burning off, it is important to remember, once you separate something from your command module, you can no longer control it. It is done. And the reason I mention this is because once you do this, right now I can throttle down, I can throttle up, everything's hunky-dory, but if I decouple while this thing is still firing, I can't shut it off. It's just going to keep shoving me from behind. It's going to keep pushing me in a direction that I don't necessarily want to go anymore. But once it burns out, hit spacebar. That will decouple the stage, and then hit spacebar to light the next engine. And then we have an engine. So, we are still climbing up towards space. We won't get there, we don't have enough thrust to get up to space, which for the purposes of Kerbal, a space program on the planet Kerb in space is 70 kilometers. Uh, up here you'll see the moon, which is one of the two orbiting bodies of Kerbin. And this is going to take forever to burn off all this fuel because it's a very small, very efficient engine. So what we're going to do is we're going to throttle down. We're going to eject. And now we just have the final stage, which is our command pod module pilot, command module, parachute, etc. Jebediah Kerman looks very impressed with all of the sights he's seeing from 10 kilometers up. But now we are coming back to Earth. Let's go ahead and time accelerate. Actually, I don't want to time accelerate. I just want to revert back to vehicle assembly. So the next part we're going to talk about is radial decoupling. And we'll talk about that in the next video. See you then.